Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are here at the NEC and we have finally made it to Ducati and their Street Fighter V4. Cuddle the bike. Oh. Cuddle in the bike. Are we rolling? Oh, oh okay. Right, okay. Well, I'm. I, do you know what? Out of. Um, I think out of the mainstream hyper nakeds, right? And we're going to shift just slightly to the side the Brutale 1000 RR from right. MV because I just don't think that's mainstream enough. I find um, that really hard to do, but all right. Okay. But for all of the hyper nakeds that uh, are coming out into 2020, and for me this year or going into 2020, it's kind of the year of the hyper naked. You know, yeah. what have we got? We've got uh, 1290. You're touching uh, that guy's boob, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> we've got, we've got, we've, we've, right, it's we've, feeling we've, up a mannequin, brilliant. Sorry. We've got the 1290 <laughs> car. We've got um, the H, ZH2. H2. Yeah. Which, to be honest, I look at that bike and I don't know whether to uh, ride it or oh. turn up with my harpoon. Or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an interesting motorcycle, isn't it? It is, right. So anyway, um, you've got, um, what else have you got? Well, K I mean, obviously KTM's new Super Duke is available. It, uh, it, it, the interesting thing is, is what, what the industry is saying right, so constitutes my, a hyper naked, yeah, right? Yeah. So my point was, this is probably the best looking one. And so far, I think people agree because they're all sold out basically. Yeah. So um, all of the deposits are taken for both the, uh, the standard uh, Street Fighter V4 and, and the V4S. The S. Yeah. So if you want one, you have to wait till July basically. And that, that is not just Hyper Bowl. Um, our, our, one, of, one of the dealers that we, that we have a partnership with in the Southwest, not make, naming any names, I was speaking to their dealer principal and they've taken over 20 deposits. Really? And, and for, for, for your average um, UK dealer, that is their full allocation of V4, of V4 Street Fighters. You can't, there's only so many bikes that Italy will, will give to each individual dealer and that, that's it, you're, you're done. But come the back end of 2020, there will be more bikes available. And yet, I mean, I, I think the, the, the kind of the, the, the look of the bike is, is very subjective in terms of whether you like, but what I would say is in the flesh, it is way more impressive than, than what you see when you look at images of the bike. Mm. I mean, the features on this thing are, well, it's jam-packed, isn't it? It's outrageous, isn't it? 208 it's... horsepower. I still can't wrap my head around that well, for a naked bike. I mean, you know, I've rode quite a lot of nakeds this year, and by the time you get over a ton, you're like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you and, know, and, you're, and, you're blowing off of it, and, and, and this thing, this thing, the same. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's gonna be 208 oh, just, horsepower. Just, it's bonkers. It's ballistic, isn't it? It's, it's ballistic. ballistic. And, and and I know we were talking about this before when we when we when we uh, we published our RMV video and you, you you basically said it's too much power yeah. and th there is an argument to say that it's too much power I think obviously you know they've, they've obviously worked quite hard with the aerodynamics um, the jury's out on the winglets if I'm totally honest as far as I'm concerned but I would imagine that in terms of the way that the bike channels air past the rider this will be quite efficient mm. and it'll need to be right because otherwise well, you're going to end up headless by the time yeah, you come yeah. to the end of your journey that's right um, but, i mean but the of course the other really interesting and i know we kind of talk about the same things with performance bikes but they are fundamentally important aside from the, the headline horsepower figure which is ludicrous and it makes nearly 100 foot pounds of torque is the weight yeah and and that and you know we talked about the h the zh2 and i feel like we, we're not necessarily the most uh complimentary about that bike but the, the jury's out on that too but that that bike is two thirds 35 to 40 kilos it's heavy bike fully fueled 200, 200 kilos, kilos. Mm. that's impressive. just wow well, it's massively impressive when you pair it up with 208 horsepower i mean this yeah. thing is going to be astonishing isn't it, it is it and, is and the uh you, i know you said about the winglets and i thought that initially i thought what the hell do you put winglets on it's a bit overkill <laughs> isn't it but um there is actually technical reasons for that so if you're <laughs> mad enough to get up to the maximum speed of 168 mile an hour this is going to put an additional 28 kilos of downforce on the bike i'm, um, I'm smiling <laughs> i'm wondering the relevance of that is kind of questionable isn't it but yeah i mean it does do something you're absolutely well, like, right i mean you know look there's people obsessed with downforce yeah. and, they, and they're like oh i just need to eat more I all right my love to... i'm just gonna nip out and test out my wing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 170 mile an hour. Well, yeah. there you go. Mm, there so, you go. Uh, really technical. I uh, think they've changed the engine. So this is the same engine lifted out of the V4. Yeah, out of the done, lifted out of the Panigale. Lifted out of the Panigale. But what they've uh, done is they've they've changed the gearing yeah. on it. So it's shorter geared. It's less, um, 
uh, less set up for pure top speed, yeah. shorten the gearing. So actually what that means in the real world, and I think it's really going to translate to the kind of uh, people that are going to own this and yeah. how they're going to ride it, is that at 60 mile an hour in sixth gear, you crack that throttle open, it's got 30% sure. more torque available well, at top gear at 60 mile an hour yeah. than the Panigale V4. Yeah. This is going to be a stonker. Yeah, you know? I mean, that, 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 that's, the, that's one of the fundamental differences. Ride it a lot lazier, basically. Yeah, and, 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 and you've just got all that roll on torque. Yeah. All that, so any, I mean, t talk about sixth gear, but I'll bet you anything, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you've it's just, be the same. all you do is wind it and it just absolutely fires you down the road. It will be, yeah, storming. Yes. I guess we've got to talk a little bit about the kind of technical stuff. Obviously, there are two specs. You've got the standard V4 and then the bike that we're standing in front, the S. I think the, the main difference is probably the suspension. It's a fully electronic setup on this. You've got Showa forks. Uh, you do also get the Marchesini wheels on this. Um, there are, I think, one or two other bits and pieces that, that change the two bikes. Pricing it starts... 17 and a half. Just over 17 and a half, and the, the S is... Nine. Just under nine, uh, just under 20, basically. Yeah. Uh, 19,700 or something like yeah. that. But, you know, I think, actually, you know, considering, like, Ducati are the Ferrari of motorcycles, um, you know, they look like Ferraris, in my opinion. It's a big and, statement, and that, but you're probably that right. V, that new V2, the Panigale V2, I know it's a different bike, but for me, that is like the top of the tree. That They're not actually badly priced, really. When you when you take into account that, you know, to get you on a 1290 Super Duke R, you're going to be actually similar money oh, compared yeah. to yeah. the Street well, Fighter V4. You... Looks what, you know, I don't know, there's just something special that they have. We've talked about there's Ducati a... being premium products. They are, there's no, no there, There's a certain, I mean, dare I say, there's a kind of certain romance attached to the is. Italian brands, particularly Ducati. And, and now Ducati uh, seem to have um, resolved sort of any major reliability issues. They, they all of a sudden over the last two, three, four, five years have become ultra desirable, haven't they? And yeah. that is reflected in the price. But you're right, if you look at the competitive products, KTM's new Super Duke R with the tech pack is going to be 18 plus. It's certainly going to sit at least somewhere between the standard V4 and the S. So they are direct competitors. I think we need to come back briefly to this kind of sort of hyper naked issue though. What you directly compare this to will be really interesting next season, whether they're going to do this against the Super Duke. I mean, we haven't even talked about BMW. Their new S1000R I think is another 12 months away. Yeah. ZH2. Um, and you're probably you're probably going to have to chuck in Brutale, thousand. You are, you are, you are. I mean, yeah. although price point is very different, um, you, you you can't you can't ignore the fact that bike is available. And and in terms of figures, is very very similar to this. Is. Headline figures are very similar. Weights are very similar. Both Italian brands, both exotic, both fantastic looking products. Um, I mean, it's a very exciting time if, if, if you know. And, and that's uh, what you're into. It's really oh, exciting time. And, if you're looking for a hypernake, you're like, God, which one do I choose? Oh, it's just, yeah, it's an embarrassment of riches, isn't it? And, it is. And, 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 and as I say, hopefully. It's a first world problem. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, very yeah. much a first world problem. Oh, oh, what do I choose? Yeah. But I mean, this has got to be right up there. For anybody on the shortlist who wants to buy a very high performance naked bike, this has got to be, and, and in fairness, that's reflected in the order tape, right? Everybody yeah. sold out. You know, it says an awful lot about the desirability of the product. Uh, we haven't really talked about the specs. We've got Brembo brakes. Yeah, um, Stylemas. Stylema yeah. brakes again. Yeah. Again, top of the tree. Um, it's going to break really well. Yeah. It's got uh, Diablo. Um, no, it's got Rosso Corsas. It's got Rosso uh, Corsa yeah. too. So it's yeah. really sticky ah. rubber. Yeah. Um, it's got a full suite of electronics. Right. It's got the uh, Ducati slide control yeah. as well, which is quite cool. Eff effectively, everything that's on your Panigale gets lifted and put onto this and slightly adjusted and, 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 and calibrated for a naked bike. But what you will also find with this is uh, there will be guys who will track monkeys who will want to ride this on track and it will perform. Of course. Now, essentially, what you do is you take the fairing off a of Panigale, you put some flat bars on it, and, and that's it. That's the yeah, recipe. Yeah. You know, and, and hold on for dear life. So, you know, you know that technically it will, it's will. it got the whole thing. It's five inch TFT. Uh, I mean, this has got the heated grips. I mean, it's got, you know, multi, and, and, and the, the adjustability, the tailoring aspect of the suite of electronics and this is, means, again, you can really, really fine tune it for what you want, which is... We, we, we're we're going to finish it. We're kind of rambling a bit, aren't we? Yeah. So, hope you enjoyed that little video of the Street Fighter V4. 
beautiful bike. If you're coming to the NEC, you should definitely check it out. But just be aware, the Ducati stand is absolutely mobbed from like morning through tonight. So you'll have to get here early and get your swing your leg over this, basically. So look, please like, please comment. We'd love to hear what you think. Please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.